Good evening, Free Enterprise fans, and welcome to another exciting race in the Eblon Elixir League in the Moonvale Mixer set of flags. I'm here in the booth with Vitasia in the commentary booth, along with Darth Plagal doing the tracking and Scala doing the restream. How are you doing tonight, Vitasia? You know, I'm super excited for a hype race. This is, of course, the Rusty Spoons, represented by Rexrol, and then uh, Team No Springs, represented by Moldboy. Two very strong runners in this tournament. Rexrol sitting at 3-1 and one overall for the tournament, and then Moldboy sitting at 4-1. and one. So two very strong runners, very you know high-end performers for their respective teams. And it's kind of an important matchup, you know, as we're getting into these last couple weeks, isn't it? Yeah, because uh, Team No Springs is currently three and three, kind of trying to fight to stay in the middle of the uh, race of the top seeds. And uh, Rusty Spoons is four and two. They're right in the thick of the entire logjam at four and two here. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because uh, Rusty Spoons uh, of the four and two teams, they are the quote-unquote highest ranked of the four and two teams because their match record is 14 and four. Um, the way they played out, uh, if they win a race in a game, like they either they either sweep their opponents or they lose one to two. So uh, this is going to be kind of an interesting race here uh, for them. Um, Rex Rawl, of course, uh, a very strong runner, longtime member of the community, but this is going to be a tough matchup with Moboy here. Moboy is uh, one of the stronger racers over on Team No Springs. So, um, really looking forward to this one. Yeah, meanwhile, our objectives we have required Darkness Crystal again because we have two moon objectives up there. What do you think of these? Yeah, it's going to be Race to the Moon. You know, this is one of those flag sets where if you have the, the logic has, you know, for most of Free Enterprise's history, uh, took a bit of a break during Potion Party but has returned in full force here in the Moonvale Mixer. Uh, if you have an objective that you can do, go do the objective, because the objective is going to be hiding either a boss hunt that you're looking for or uh, another key item that could unlock something else. So uh, really looking forward. If we can get to the moon quick, uh, I expect us to do so. And, there's and we have an, an edge, edge and a spoon. Woo. So we're looking for an eddy this time pretty early. Yeah, and worth noting in those list of in our uh, satchel there, it looks like we had a couple of hourglasses too. You have an edge and a couple of hourglasses that really helps us uh, unlock some of those early trap chests. And remember, if you can pull an adamant or a crystal sword or or something like that, some of the really good gear from those trap chests. You know, the rest of the treasure chests only have up to tier five loot. Uh, the really good stuff is going to be in those trap chests. So early hourglasses fantastic pull. It looks like both runners are going to check out uh, Baron first. Who that character is in the bed, or not the bed, in the cafe. And it is young. Casual lunar staff there, and yeah, I mean, okay, we see a young. It's not bad. Yeah, and uh, looks like Brex is selling off all those uh, rune rings, trading them for cabins and maybe some star veils. You know, I can see uh, avoiding those at the moment, absolutely. Um, in the meantime, Moboy is saying, yes, absolutely, I will definitely take one of those, uh, you know, going right immediately down to uh, look like Eblen Castle. Now, Edge doesn't have any decent gear. We have a, you know, a fantastic, quote unquote, fantastic Fireclaw here <laughs> for <laughs> Edge to equip. Uh, so that feels not great, but again, with those hourglasses, you know, going in here fearless to be able to check out uh, any of these trap chests if you happen to run into it. it maybe you got lucky that Ninja Swords are tier 5, so you could get one of those before maybe you hit those trap chests. You never know. And it looks like uh, Rex is meanwhile taking on that Ashura in the Baron Inn, and See if you can get that young early and the key item check. Sure doesn't have a whole lot of health here, so should be able to lock it down, get to the second fight. Yeah, kind of missing on some lockdowns right now. I think trying to one-shot it. This spot does not have a ton of HP, 
So maybe hoping for just kind of a, a one shot. The problem is the gear that we have, there's just, we're not doing a whole lot of damage here. Yep, and it looks like Rex is going to reset out of it for the time being. Uh, we did find a samurai bow on Mulberry's side, along with, um, oh, what was the other thing that was in there? We did see another hourglass over on Mulberry's side, so. That's what it was, I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, it was, I remember seeing it going, oh yeah, that's going to be nice. Um, no trap chests yet on Mulberry's side. Gotta wonder if he's going to. Button save, yeah. yeah that would be I mean, he's at least saving, yeah. It and looks like the, uh, Rex is in the same place now, also visiting Eblon to get the uh, gear here. Yeah, fantastic gear to have here. Um, yeah, so we're at three hourglasses now, absolutely. Uh, let's go ahead and, and take some time, get through these, get some experience. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, you feel a little bit bad because the team is not getting the, you know, there's it's not a ton of people getting the experience, but uh, again, if you find an early adamant, everything just kind of opens it up quite a bit here. I'm going to start that slumber sword, which is not really all that useful except in this context, so that's helpful. Uh, it says it's got the samurai bow, that's going to help a little bit. And it looks like some of start with white arrows. Great, but I mean, it's uh, better than the fire claw. I mean, is it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd say at least right now it is. I get some Moonbale off it. That could be useful later on. Yeah, Moonbale is one of those items that, you know, depend if there if you have a, a, a real rough boss in one location, it can make it free. Um, okay, this is... Uh, this, yeah, this Stalin is Skull one. Chest. Yeah. Uh, the one we doesn't want to see right now is the um, yogurts because there's no real weakness against them. They've got a lot of HP. Would love to pull a mute dagger before that. I mean, just before it, if you could. Or mute arrows for Sid, either one. Yeah, there's a couple of options for that. Oh, just the Staleman? Should be okay. And while well, I gets through it, it's a crystal sword. Okay, well, <laughs> more good weapons for characters you're looking for but don't have yet. And decided, hey, I've gotten two out of these three trap chests. Going to go out and and leave, abandoning the mad ogre chest at this point in time. That is an interesting play, but probably did not feel comfortable again because no easy way to kill those not a lot of physical damage on this on these characters right now yeah i, I think i don't mind the uh the play there i mean it's trying to avoid a time sink early on he knows it's gonna be that one to the as he opens up leg in a waterfall not gonna see it tonight nope of course really the issue is uh, hey, we found our crystal sword. Let's go find our paladin as quickly as we can because that changes the whole facet of the game. Like, everything changes with crystal sword Cecil. If he's not in some place where really I could get him in time for it to matter. If he's at the back of the giant, I mean, you're not going to really probably take him that way unless you really want to try a second grind. I mean, there's always the possibility of Golbez Fabul Gauntlet doubled up at Giant, right? Right? There is always that possibility. It'd be funny. Russ in the booth, anyways. Hey, I'm not running the seed. I don't have to worry about that. I'm fine with Scholar rolling absolute entertainment for us right now. There's a long sword for Edge. That's good. And uh, Mulboy's in the Antlion Cave. Gonna loot it out a little bit. 
Yep, when you're looking for a little bit of loot, perfectly fine to do that. Yeah, it looks like Rex now that he has two of the three trap chests also gonna at least go out and save. Let's see if he also leaves. Yes, he will. And we have luggage in the middle of the Antlion Cave. I knew the airline put my luggage somewhere, but I wouldn't think they put it here. Charm arrows? That's something nice for Sid right at the moment. That's that sometimes forgotten mist check in the shops. They can have some good stuff. Antlion Cave has the hook, which is required for our Falcon objective. It's It's been a bit of an inside joke in this tournament up to this point in time. Launch the Falcon has been an objective for a fair number of seeds that I've seen. And up to this point in time, you can pretty reliably say, hey, if launch the Falcon's an objective, the Magma Key is going to be our intended underground route, so just be prepared to do a little bit of hunting for the hook. Uh, not in this case, though. Um, I don't I know, imagine... Rose in the yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, Mute Dagger is also found by Rex in uh, Ipo. So he's got the mute now for the sir that he had faded earlier. But go back. It's a significant pickup. Um, still looking for a better weapon. We found a single long sword, and here's the cane up on Mount Hobbs, which is a nice addition to this party, honestly. And this is a nice place to see Turtle. I mean, it's not that powerful here. Dart that Slumber Sword, that was a, a good use of kind of a mid-tier equipment that's otherwise not useful, but can do some damage uh, in the early game with Dart to just quickly mow something down. Yep, and Rex is going to also come and get the cane. Yeah, it looks like Mole Boy's gonna dive that hook route, at least see who the character is. I really like this play. Um, checking who the character is, seeing if you can get some levels on them. Again, you have a crystal sword, so you're kind of hoping, you know, you're seeing it, you're finding that Cecil somewhere, so you're prioritizing character checks, because again, everything kind of speeds up at that point in time. Still need to, of course, unlock him, but also kind of knowing Hey, we're we're in kind of a good spot right now with everything else that we have. Yeah, and I mean, even if you don't find Cecil, I mean, Edward or Fu would be a nice consolation prize right about now. Yeah, Edward, Fu might find one of our white mages. I know we you said we've already seen Rosa, but I would absolutely take either of those. It looks like Charm Arrows for the Ogres, so this will go easier for Mobile. This is the last Dublin Trap Chest. Yes, Kane is helping. He's, he's attempting to help. Hey, that would have been fantastic just like five seconds ago. <laughs> It'll be very, those meat arrows too would have been fantastic about five seconds ago too. <laughs> oh my, that, 
you feel a little bit bad. She's like, uh, the answer was sitting right next door. Those charm arrows did pretty good, though. Eh? Rex Rollins got his hook. Just another casual hourglass if we wanted to do the stalemen check uh, or even uh, the mad ogre check on our way down. Um, both of them can give some pretty good experience. I feel like oh, I just have more hourglasses. Hourglasses. more hourglasses in the store, so I as mean, many as you want. And coffins. Okay, these trap chests are being nerfed pretty badly here. I, I can sense some folks in chat seeing his cursor hover over that crystal sword saying, Do it. You can do it without it. Yeah, Asuka's probably sell, yelling, sell it, sell it all over the place with crystal swords. We have a ninja shirt here for Edge if we want it. Cat claws for that Yang who's coming up. Ninja sword, Actually, and this is loaded. Yeah, this is a fantastic shop right now. Uh, shout out uh, to Nightdew for the raid. Appreciate you, Nightdew. And at this point, we have Edge with Masamune, Ninja. So yeah, we're putting all the equipment on him. We're putting the bandana, we're putting the strength ring, and saying this is the source of damage for the foreseeable future. Until we find Cecil about, you know, half five minutes down the road at the end of this uh, cave, and then Edge becomes the second banana. There is no shame to being second place to Crystal Sword Cecil. I might disagree with you on that one. Well, Kane can go jump in a pool. It is worth noting, the nice thing about having Sid as a hero is that Sid is naturally kind of slow anyway. Plus, we're given a four facts to start things off, which gives you minus five agility in addition to everything. So we're really not worried about over leveling or over agility in anything in this particular seat because everything is going to be slow compared to the rest of the party. Yeah, it's one of the nice benefits about having Sid or um, one of the twins. I mean, their agility doesn't get too, too high. And this chance play out, we're seeing that uh, Ashur and Leviathan moved from the Fey March up into Baron Inn. They just took up residence there as a pair. Look, it, sometimes you have to have date night in a new restaurant. You have to go to the next town over. It happens. I'm fine with it. But that's, that's kind of spicy. Yeah, I like it. And there's a Fu, which is nice to see for Mole Boy. That's worth the price of admission. Only slightly. I mean, the, the problem is that we just haven't done a ton of bosses yet. Rex ended up picking up his young, so uh, is set up reasonably well for, for his young, but uh, otherwise, Moboy has kind of a, a, a better overall party, I think, with the young, or without the young, but with the Fu, uh, who can be the healer for this particular party, and then a pretty kitted out edge at this point. And right now, Fu is a nice three, so this is something worth it on the offensive side. It looks like Mobile is probably going to go back out and get some more bosses down and get that Fu a little more powered up. And I did not see who the boss was into the Underworld. Was it just a Lunar Sparkle? 
Um, I say yes, but I've uh, not quite sure. You'd think I'd remember to, you know, do my job every now and then, look at what's going on on the screen. But, you know, no, you were you were looking at something, but Fu was just sort of like so much more interesting than what was ever behind. <laughs> it's like Fu, Fu, shiny. Someone is asking, why is Fu's class mop? Really, it's because he's great at cleaning up everyone else's messes. It doesn't matter what kind of mess, just curing, healing, a little bit of extra damage. He's a great cleanup man. And Rex is going to show us the sparkles in Baron. It is the Pale Dim, doot 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 himself. Meanwhile, Mole Boy uh, gets through that Asur Leviathan fight, uh, I think a little bit faster than Rex Rawl did at this point. Uh, Rex in Baron doing the Paladin fight. King Doot 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 himself, but uh, it's a bit of a slog, only doing about 400 to 500 a swing with every character. And as far as Fu goes on uh, Mole Boy's side, he got Cure 4 pretty early on this one, so that Fu is getting some nice spells early. Source for Robes and Ninja Hats and Baron. Yeah, that Baron shot, someone mentioned in chat, is sneaky good. It's a, it's a fantastic shot. So Rex is going back out and saving after the first Baron fight, just in case there's something nasty at uh, the second spot. That's a bit surprising. You don't see many runners safety saving for that Baron. I have to ask about it. Maybe he just has a feeling that there could be something nasty uh, on the throne in that trench coat. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could. it's one of those plays that you know, you, you don't see a whole lot of people do it, but when it happens and when you need it, it feels like a genius play. Old boy's going to follow him into the Baron Castle. And tonight, the role of the King of Baron is being played by Octopus. Kind of punchy, but absolutely doable in this particular spot. Yeah, not the Octomile of the Gale, but slower as the tentacles start to go away. So I said to get through the first couple hits, and then this should be pretty well in hand. And you know, it's it's nice to know that we still have a water themed boss in in the spot. So this it's not French vanilla, it's like it's like that weird exotic spicy vanilla that they have at, at all those boutique ice cream shops right at the moment. And we have the low quality stone in Baron that's a little bit liquidy today. Concrete didn't settle yet. Rex is through and is hoping for either a Cecil or an Edward here. All right, gets a Palum. It's not too bad. I'll take I'll take a Palum. 
Palum is a great early game. We're at, we're approaching the mid game now, so um, Rex also still has one treasure chest to open up in you know Eplin Castle, plus uh, you know doing the hook route. So that Palum is absolutely going to be online and ready to go before we have to actually dive uh, the underworld. It's easy up to Quake, and then we're perfectly fine for the hook route that's the way underground. Power key in the trash can. Now, this is a cheeky play. I really like this. You know, this is, you would be very under leveled uh, to be able to do this, but if this hits and it hits well, uh, this is a great amount of experience uh, checking here the Baron Basement Throne. There's still several free checks on here where it's the hourglasses can get through, so it's got a decent chance of maybe pulling something up lucky. This isn't bad, really, for that. Yeah, you can get through this. I mean, if you can survive the round of punches, the blue dolls actually are vulnerable to the stop. So this is 100% doable. Yeah, and if uh, using the Moon Veil, I think it just becomes totally free, because then that character couldn't get hit, but I don't think it's really needed here yet. Oh, Rex is going to reset out of it, though. Yeah, I think his cane was the first character and got knocked down while trying to use the Hourglass, so that probably... I mean, he, he lost the Hourglass, so... Yeah, it makes sense there, because then you're not going to be able to stop him. Oh, Cheeky Vanilla Demist. That's spicy. That's it's it's very, very interesting there. Scholar, we did randomize this, right? That's three vanillas already, we haven't even gone to ground yet. Look, we're just we're just really simply uh you know, this is the ice cream shop seed. Everyone gets a scoop of vanilla. And Rex is going to the other side of Mist. Check this uh, out just in case it is the package. Doesn't want to get stuck. Oh, it's a darkness crystal. Oh, wow. So that's significant. Yeah, I mean, it's hard required. If uh, Mobile doesn't check that until late, he just might miss that for a while. That's, uh, so yeah, it is hard required. We know that both Vanilla Room and Vanilla Ribbon Room and Vanilla White Spear Altar are required. Full stop. Um, looks like Rex is gonna check that character right away for that Cecil open. Well, we still need to even do Mount Ordeal, so it's interesting. Like, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get the Cecil. I might. I might even, instead of going up to the moon right now, like I would just go do Mount Ordeals because if the Cecil is up there, then you could just bop right on over next door, do hair dryers, get a bunch of levels, and and then kind of make your decision on where to go from there. Right, but I know a lot of people would like to fade from Mount Ordeals, they can. I mean, I we do have uh, several boss hunts on the way, so it's not as good as in Potion Party, but. Let's go select to fade this anyways. The mobile meanwhile did the dual defense and got a big bomb out of it. So Arknight was trying to blow up the as well as blow up mist. Finds an exit in the Fubul Tower that'll uh, save some time somewhere. Yeah, run into a little bit of the inventory boss, unfortunately. So, going to have to, to set things up a little bit here. Uh, meanwhile, Rexrawl ends up finding the one, the only. Oh boy. 
the the the, <laughs> the D money man himself. So here's here's the question. Yeah, I feel like yeah, you gotta take him because D money, the the D machine grind is now unlocked and available to us. But you know that comes with some extra caveats. Not only is it unlocked and available to us, but it is very, very, very hidden. Like it's not something that every runner is going to be able to do right now. Oh, um, so Gala's right. Uh, I don't think he's done our deals yet. Rex hasn't. Oh, no. Oh, no, he hasn't. So uh, he can't do weak. I, I wonder if he's going to realize that before he gets into this. So he didn't do a Baron setup either, so I mean... Or you, you know run is on in this case, so if he finds a bail, it's not that he can't run from it. Yeah, he he left the giant. He's like, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> like, so I this to get done first here. But yeah, this is one of those periods of time where you realize, okay, where if you can set tell up and and you know make sure he has weak get ready to go do the grind um where that darkness crystal is located you know you can make a semi-reasonable assumption that my opponent isn't gonna find this for a little bit so if you chase it and follow it and leverage it into your strategy knowing hey i got darkness crystal my opponent doesn't. I can get a grind real quick. Your party's not bad, all things said. You got uh, two pretty good melees in Kane and Edge. You have a good Black Mage in Palum. Um, you got your Anchor in Sid, and then Tella, who helps the whole thing go. Yeah, it's it's just a really strong play to do D-Machine and then sweep through the rest of the seed. And even though he doesn't know it yet, he can replace that Tella for a fool when he's done with the grind. I wonder if Rex is actually going to check who that uh, hook rock character is before he goes into the giant for that uh, D-Money grind. Here's the, the nice thing of all that, though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like, he could do the D-Money grind and then ditch Tella immediately afterwards and say, nope, I'm good. And Fu is going to, it comes in at level 50. Like, you're set. Well, I wasn't thinking of it for Fu. I was talking about, you know, he doesn't really know who that character is yet. If it's Cecil, you want the Cecil for the earlier grind instead of having to, you know, slingshot him. It's not going to take that long, but uh, so there's a package on ordeals, so that's going to be another character check possibility. And that might drive uh, Mobile in the right direction. If he has to stop by the package anyways, he might check that Miss Cave. Yeah, I might dodge it under normal circumstance, but I already have that crystal sword sitting there, just sitting there. So, yeah, I can see him at least peeking in. And while you're there, why not? Just gonna find out the news about the leg in the waterfall. And we'll reset of that pretty quick. And it looks like Rex is going to check the hook route first before he goes, goes and does the giant. It's a logical play. The interesting thing is it's one of those plays that we're like, I don't know if I'd take the the foo right now. I, I I would intend for foo to be the uh, I'll take him next afterwards. Like I'll pick him up when I don't need tell anymore. The good news is we don't have C by on. I mean, you guys go to the Tower of Wishes and pick up uh, the foo after the grind.
He's gonna take that last trap chest and find his uh, pounds of steel for Edge over there. Boy is heading for Mist. Okay, Mole Boy is making the the wombo combo play. He's gonna check both the cave. Oh, this. This is He's going to get rewarding <laughs> Well, here's the problem. He's going to get rewarded, but if he doesn't go into the back entrance, he's going to have to go through a cutscene and then fly back over to the front side. I, I, I was hoping he'd actually do that since he knows he has the double check now, but... Yeah, it's going to take the hidden entrance in. The question is, do you check the character first, or do you check uh, Rydia's mom first? Oh, you, you have to check Rydia's mom first. You, you just have to. <clears throat> Inventory boss is continuing to strike on Mobile's side. Almost like uh, the octopus is coming around just to uh, nail him. I wonder, I kind of want to take a look at who's magic right now. Like, have we killed enough bosses that he might know weak? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly possible that he might. So now oh, we'll boy found the darkness. I'm curious... Do you it's one of those things that, again, not everyone checks the Mist Cave until it's absolutely required. If you do, like, if you're in Mulboy spot now, do you wonder, hey... Well, there's a White Mage there, but not gonna take her right now. And is... Going okay, he's gonna go uh, launch the whale. Rex gets the good news about the foo. And he's gonna swap out telephone. Oh okay. So this now is going over from D my to D maybe. Checking out the spells on Fu. Fu has white already and berserk. Or four. Very solid white magic setup. Medium nice new. Wow. <laughs> Only 1,200. <laughs> that's, that's a fantastic setup for the black magic. None of the, I mean, does not have the weak spell though. So it says, hey, we got to launch the Falcon anyway. Might as well do it while we can get some experience on it. Yeah, just taking this in the Dwarf Castle, you have more chances to get the weak, so... Boy's gonna come on the moon, see who the character is up here.
Scala, forgive me, but I have a song that's stuck in my head that if I do not sing at this very moment... <laughs> hey, I just met Fu. This seed is crazy. Here's the darkest crystal. Demani, maybe. I apologize to everyone out there who had to go through that. Speaking of going through things, uh, Rex has a Vigan up here in the first spot on the hook route. Vigan's a little bit rude here. There's there's no getting around that. Yeah, but who has Quakes? I mean, this isn't too bad. Old Boy gets the awesome news of the Teller. Let's see if he's going to take it for a D-Money grind. No. Looks like hair dryers are on the menu. I love doing hair dryers checks, especially at this kind of early, early to mid seed. Like, it's just such good experience at this point. Pogo Pogo is our second boss on the hook route. That's a little rude here. Just an Artemis bow. Um, one of the things that normally we like to see that because our Sid would love to equip that, but uh, at the same time, we're a little cautious because Artie Artie on Sid would increase his agility quite a bit. We, we like him slow. Well, you can always start with him having something else equipped and just slide up and start in the fight and not get the agility penalty. Yeah, but I'm lazy, and that takes work. Well... <laughs> no, there's no fixing lazy. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean... Parents tried for many years to fix that. Didn't work. Good news is with this Ogo, I mean, who does no cure for? That can keep the party up pretty good. That's kind of hurt a little bit with the nuke because if who does use the nuke is going to get counter blaze on the party. Old boy sees that we have an ant line residing in its normal home on the moon. That's a punchy ant line right there. So, absolutely. It's like, nah, nah, we're good for now. Yeah, although. The Moonveil would help you there, but again, the counter, it would uh, get through that Moonveil, so not ideal for right now. I was going to check out the base of the Baron looks like. Yep, we saw Rex check it out earlier. <clears throat> Moleboy has not, though. Um, after those hair dryers, I think Moleboy's going to be set up in a much better position to get those down. But Rex is going to be the first one into the underworld. I Moleboy has the food with the quakes. I mean, uh, Rex didn't have that when he first checked. That quake will do work on these dolls.
and for the 999th time, the pitfall gets the party again, undefeated. Did anyone else, when they were kids, try to grind up until Rosa learned float? Hey, I could float over that pit. Uh. And there goes the quake, and there go the dolls. Not the big XP infusion, because a lot of the experience is sitting on the Calbrenna big doll, but we'll take the the key item spot. Hey! Hey! <laughs> it's not logical, because the Baron Basement Throne is not part of the normal logical underground progression, but you don't have to do the hook drive if you don't want to. It is required, though, with your objectives. Rexes go back into the tower on the lower end. We saw Odin sitting up here at the top, but has the tower key. <clears throat> Here's the thing, like, yeah, it's nice to be able to do it, but to to do use magma key, but launch the falcon is still an objective, right? Like, do you really save a whole lot of time? It depends if you find the other six and don't need to do it. I mean, if for some reason you do find Golbez and Fabul underground and you find your harp and your legend sword and your adamant, you might not need to do it. Let's see, we already got Darkness Crystal, so we already have access to objectives 5 and 7. We also have access to do 6, so that's 3. So, boss hunts for two of them, and we're looking for really three key items anymore. So key items is not quite as important or just about as important as boss checks at this point in time. Although if that Ice Girl through that vanilla ribbon room is holding one of the other objectives up there, like one, two, or three. That could be a good skip. Rex has realized that she was a little bit low on MP, gonna refresh from an elixir. Boy is gonna check out the dwarf castle. I, mean, I know Quake is a pretty fast cast, but I also know Odin is quad weak to lightning, so I I think Lit 2 is gonna do more than Quake typically, right? Then Quake, I think, yes. I'm not sure if it would beat Nuke. No, oh yeah, it won't beat Nuke. And Odin is down. And there's a harp for music. If we wanted to be, we could be in pure face check mode right now. Pure face check mode. Now, we, we would have to find both Golbez and the Gauntlet, which might be a little unrealistic considering all the different things that we all the different key items that lock bosses right now but uh well actually there's great. there's only really three bosses that are locked right now the two in zot and the one in sealed cave and the one in package because you don't have the package yet Oh, water hag. Yeah, water hag. Only one blue robe, sad face. Meanwhile, Mobile gets the week on the foo, so if he wants to do demon eats back on the table. Kinda late for it now. 
<clears throat> and a totally free uh... yeah. King and Queen of Evelyn and a duplicate Yom. Apparently that wasn't Rose in the Bed earlier on in the start of the game, so I'm not sure who that is now. Yeah, Rosa was in the bed at the start of the game. So no, no, no. No, Rosa's not the dupe. She was in the package check. So since we saw a second young, it can't be her in the bed. Oh. Hmm. Oh, hmm. Okay. Worth noting, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, Pala might know Warp. Maybe we're hoping Fu does. Oh, Earth Crystal from the uh, Dwarf Castle check. That gets rid of most of the rest of the boss checks and gets us two more character checks. And Warp is known, apparently. Or Rat Tail. At the same time that Rex picked something up, and I did not see what that was. Um, oh, the harp was in the top. I don't see anything else lit up on the tracker that was a key item. Ah, just another moon veil. Moonvale? So, okay, we're getting a lot of protection against punches. And hey, I know a perfect target for use of that moon veil. That ant lion up there. Rex is going to give us a check to the Famer Freebie. It is half a forge. And Moldboy's going to do the most important check down here, which is to validate the seed and tell us what the job dwarf is today. There's Golbez. Uh, we are... Okay. Horticultural Worker Supervisor. Plus a, a cursed ring as well. And agility no longer matters except for if Sid ever hits zero. All right, so we have Gobez. The only things that we're hunting down right now are the Fabul Gauntlet and the Adamant Rock. One of those two. Um, it does look like Rex is setting up uh, his party to be able to handle um, pretty much whatever he needs to right now. Um, <laughs> when you have Golbez, the interesting thing is he cannot paralyze you if you already have another status condition. So, hey, why not just uh, set everything up, piggy and size your party? And that way, even when folks get knocked over, you still have will have actions ready to keep. <laughs> Is going to enter uh, Tower of Babel meanwhile. It'll probably get his uh, harp as well from this.
Every good comedian is supposed to laugh at themselves. does look like Moboy is opening a handful of the treasure chests as well, just hoping for um, some sort of adamant or, or something from these trap chests. Uh, he has a Thunderclaw, so they're falling over pretty quick. And meanwhile, the Polis fight is in hand for Rex. He's got Starvels up and uh, could get through this. It's a sand ruby. Water hag seems excessive. Yeah, like if this was potion party, remember the the scripts won't follow through. But because the scripts are turned on, it still takes three hits. Like he doesn't have that much HP. He shouldn't have that much HP here. No, he only has, what, like, maybe 400 here or something like that? Yeah, something really low. Someone in chat likes Duke Seafood, apparently. Boys opening up some more trap chests down here. A Stardust Rod for that uh, food, that's pretty nice. Or that Palom. Yeah, it's nice. I think the problem is when you're opening those trap chests, you're hoping for game changing this stuff. And and the problem is we haven't really seen anything game changing right now, right? Let's see if you can speak an Adam armor into existence here, huh? I mean, uh, that would be really interesting. And nope, just a bit more. Sorry. Everyone knows the admin armors are probably in the Sylph Cave, but you don't ever really want to check on this flag set. So if Mobile gets through these two dwarf fights, he's going to actually have 10 key items, because these are going to give the Earth Crystal and the um, Red Tail. set up fairly well, all things said. When you look at everything set up, um, already has two objectives down, has access to two more, um, or three more, really. So, knows exactly what he needs to get done, and we're in kind of, do your objectives, see what happens. I can absolutely see from here, doing Cave Magnus, and then doing some sort of grind, for a little bit, you have your 10 key items, and then you go to the moon, do White Spear Altar, Vanilla Ribbon Room, maybe clear out the rest of the moon while you happen to be up there, uh, and see if you you need it. Yeah, I mean, there's no boss on it. I mean, if you have three boss checks to get down for our objectives, I mean, it's not unlikely that uh, Gauntlet might be one of those three.
we've seen sirens for sale anywhere down here in the under underground, so... Yeah, that you might be able to steal some from the trap chests. Yeah, I get the sense, because we're we're kind of watching mobile crawl go back and forth right now. You get the sense, at least I do, that Mobile is more comfortable in what he's doing. He certainly is a little bit higher level um, and just kind of mowing through stuff. But that being said, Rex has two objectives up on him to none. Um, and just because you're higher level and, and are able to go through it, like those, that's time at this point in time that Mobile is going to have to spend making it up. While Rex is not under leveled by any stretch, he's still able to get through things Maybe not as quickly or comfortably as Mobile has, but yep. is but still there are those, There are those sirens in Tomro, so we can crack some eggs and get some levels pretty quick. Uh, oh, that's right. It looks like uh, Rex did not warp, so it does not have the red tail. No, it's actually it's not a zonk here. It is actually an item. Yep, and the, the <clears throat> prevailing wisdom continues to prevail. Rex is saying, I have an objective that would reward me another key item plus a boss check. We're going to go do that. No, Beowulf Golbez was just recently found. Um, Golbez was located. Gosh, where was it? Uh, Queen Spot at Fame Arch. Queen Spot, yeah, okay. Pictures can be hard to read, too. They say they're worth a thousand words, so that's like trying to read a thousand words at once, right? is going to, about to get the the good slash bad news that Golbez is down here just hanging out chilling uh, but meanwhile DJ Spoonie B will be mixing his beats here directly so sit back and enjoy
That was a great jam. Unfortunately, it just didn't last all that long. Yeah, I mean, this stage, uh, Rex is pretty powerful, and that karate isn't too much of a challenge. Yeah, it's a free adamant armor if he wants it, though. Where was that rat tail again? That was in the um, crystal room of Dwarf Castle, or in this case, it'd be in the sealed cave now for Rex to see past it. Oh, he did he not have warp or just opted not to I, get it? I think Fu was all the way up at that point. He should have had it. He just didn't do it, it seemed like. It was an old man. He just forgot to do it, you know? Uh, it, you know what? It happens. It happens to the best of us. Yeah, everyone has pretty much had that happen at some point or other. It's a race, it's a bit of high pressure, and you know, sometimes your mind is already on to the next thing. It's like, you know, you you got your dwarf castle down, you got your earth crystal. It's actually why I usually when I'm down there, I try to warp first so I don't accidentally forget to do it. Rex also checking the bed character, so we're gonna get our answer here. I think you remember it was Edward, because, yeah, there's that, uh, mop of hair. <laughs> Absolutely picking it up. We have the spoon, so, uh, and says, hey, Kane is not, is not pulling his weight right now. Why, why not? Yeah, so, unfortunately, um, Pain is sort of like uh, towards the end game, it gets a little bit more mediocre compared to some of their characters. Spoonwork can definitely out damage him at the end, especially with the adamant armor from the pink tail we're gonna get. Okay, now Rex is going to go ahead and get the uh, Hovercraft for the Pink Tail turn. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Pink Tail Spoon Word uh, with Adamant Armor seems pretty good, actually. Yeah, that makes you kind of uh, get over that the Crystal Sword Cecil just is not happening, it seems, this seed. So right now, we we're still looking for either the adamant rock or for the football gauntlet. Um, it feels like kind of the the quote unquote right answer is to do some grind here, maybe if you're not comfortable with your levels, but then immediately say, hey, let's go do this white spear and ribbon room because if that's the answer, then we're good to go. Yep. And meanwhile, the Dark Elf in uh, he marches a Zonk. It's just Artemis arrows, which is good for the Sid. We don't really want to put those on, but other than that... Uh... Looks like Moboy is setting up Sheila 1.
And Spoon is coming online with a vengeance. Spoon, adamant, save the rest of your gear for the rest of the party. Why not? If you have your silverware and you have your armor, do you anything else, really? Nah, you're good. It's like Mole Boy is going to get PK Magus check out of the way, so we're going to have a redux of music in a minute here. Other bark is scrambling some eggs. Is it scrambled or is it poached? Because we're hitting it with a spoon. You're just kind of like tapping it, and doing poached eggs. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I often uh, scramble eggs with a spoon, so I mean, go the other way. <laughs> So Moboy on his way to do objective number three will still at some point have to launch the Falcon, which is going to be a bit of a time sink no matter what ends up happening. But otherwise, the levels that Rex is gathering right now between that and Spoonward, um, really setting him up for success to be able to just go right to this moon and call it good. Yep, I mean, this uh, the moon shouldn't be a... Uh, terrible thing by the time he gets up there because it's Edward, we have the HP, everybody else gives the HP. <coughs> the only thing you might not like to see up there is if there is a gauntlet up there somewhere. Rex is done with his grind and is going to head to the moon, looks like now. But meanwhile, we have a repeat of music coming up, so. We will give you a reprise of that. And Mobile is through the uh, Dave Magus check. We will get his um, detail off of this. Ready for Admiral Armor. Rex is diving the LST. We'll probably head for White Spear in the Ribbon Room directly without checking anything else. So really, I mean, in the position that Mole Boy is in right now, what he needs to have happen, I, I got to imagine he's going to be turning in Rat Tail, Pink Tail very, very quickly. Um, oh, he's going to be doing the Earth Crystal as well. So this is something that Rex has not yet done. So he's he's kind of hoping that this hits. 
right now. Like, Moboy needs this or Rat Tail to hit. Um, well, yeah, what and... Moboy really needs is he needs the other half forge somewhere, like maybe at that Rat Tail would be great for him. And that uh, Gauntlet would be somewhere either on a Robbie's checking or someplace really sneaky like the, uh, the Lucid Cave. Yeah, I mean, Rex is, is kind of... I would say this, Moboy needs Rex to... I mean, fine, he's gonna be... He's going to have his moon objectives done before Moboy does. I think that's, that's a foregone conclusion at this point. Uh, but what he needs to have happen is Rex to waste the rest of his time up here on the moon, and it's just nothing. It's like, not even a pass sort of reward. Um, because right now Rex is up on launching the Falcon and it's going to be up on two more objectives. So Moboy does have to have everything else hit, but more to the point, Rex, he's got to hope that Rex falters somehow at this point. You've got Vale here on the moon, so that's going to kind of nerf Alum and Pooh a bit because they can't break through magic defense here. You don't have a cane to get through it because the cane was like go for Eddie. So, let's look at through this, but it's going to be a little bit harder. Yeah, still really solid magic defense, so now it's just a matter of keeping everyone up. And we see a DKC, his uh, first uh, boss in Zot. Yes, there, there's Cecil, but this Cecil has not actually become a paladin. So, not very useful. Now, luckily, it was speedy enough to, to hurry up and, you know, throw his dark waves relatively quickly so we can get through it. Well, justice should be speedy, so, you know. I mean, in my experience, justice is very rarely speedy. Uh, if you go the official route, I mean, you know, if you go the Batman route, it can be very quick. And what was it? Give us a check of the characters up here. And we see, hey, there's our paladin. Now, does Moboy pick him up, do you think? I have to imagine he does, because this is kind of a bit out of the way for him. I mean, he has objectives he can check right now, and the old saying is, do your objectives, do your freebies. So I think he wants to go for looking for the Cecil. And finds that Cecil has kidnapped a child that raises, you know... Interesting question of uh, hostages there. And Kane is going for Cecil, and Rydia is just uh, being left behind. Uh, yes, we have seen the dupe. It's Yon in the seat. <laughs> This Val ends up being a little bit rude, and it is, of course, one of our objective locations. Rex does get through it, though. Oh. He's hoping this is going to be an adamant rock. This is the next. Oh, it is. That's going to be go mode. Yeah, that's that's go mode for Rex. And more to the point, Rex knows it. And he's like, OK, we're going to save. We're going to go turn this in. Now, really, I mean, he's really hoping at this point that he can do the Vanilla Ribbon Room, and that's a pass. He has two shots at it, but even if not, I mean, he's in a really, really good spot. Uh, even though he doesn't know where Moboy is, I mean, he's about to have almost four objectives over Moboy. This is a Mylon Z that shouldn't be too bad here. 
That's a little punchy, but definitely doable with the levels that we're at right at the moment. Yeah, we've got a blink from food. We've got uh, moon veils up here. I mean, if you have moon veil up, this is basically a free fight. Just how long is it going to take you? Yeah, yeah there, there's uh, a possibility up here four, but I think Nuke is actually stronger. And never mind about the pass because Moldboy just picked it up. So, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that means he's gonna have to Rex have to walk the lunar subterrain again, but that's only gonna take him about an extra three minutes. Uh, I, I think we'll always have to have him wipe a couple of times to even get really back in this. Yeah, and it's not that Mole Boy is is on a bad path per se. It's just one of those, hey, he's you know, Rex did the prevailing wisdom which is do your objectives follow them and you shall be rewarded and he has absolutely been rewarded for this and mobile boy with that with that rat tail that uh, rex skipped out on it just turns out to be another wild goose chase it's the pan it might drag him down now to do the pan track do sheila which wasn't going to turn in anything uh all i can really get from this is the luca key which you also know is uh, it might be the gauntlet but at this point it doesn't help you see it It is nice to see the forge in this particular uh, seed as well. Um, Sid Hero has the best forge weapons. <clears throat> like, not only can can he equip them, but also like Sid and Kane can equip at least a couple of, of you know, depending on if he gets the guy get axe, which is fantastic. But uh, all of the weapons that Sid gets really hit home and can be very very strong. So. Rex is going to have two heavy hitters in both Spoonward and Sid and Edge, by the way, who is swinging for just a paltry, you know, 3,500 or so on Z. So he set up incredibly well for his Z fight. Yeah, and even with the hybrid, I mean, we've got two new casters in the party here. So, I mean, this could, uh, this shouldn't be that bad of a Z fight for uh, Rex here. And meanwhile, it looks like Moleboy is going to do the hook route now after uh, baiting it for a while. He did it. He did it, everyone. He sold the Crystal Sword and then also sold the Avenger because, I mean, still no one to equip it. He could have darted it, but, you know. is going to buy a bunch of apples, probably for Eddie. And it's the Dragon Dax. Uh, Mole Boy did the... Um... Ogre chest in the hook route, got the power short out of it. <laughs> Looks like uh, I'm just going to start it by putting that dwarf axe on Sid to make me even slower. Crystal in hand, it's off to the moon. I do appreciate the discussion that's going on in chat with you know, is that is the guy guy Gidax any good? And yeah, I mean all of the, the weapons that you can get through the hero uh with the exception of a couple there's a couple that aren't very good at all but most of them are top notch will hit as hard as a crystal sword sort of weapons 
Um, the, the Geigen Dax definitely is one of them. And that's the most versatile weapon because again, three characters can equip that. Not only can Sid equip it, but so can Kane and Cecil. Yeah, I mean, the uh, scrap battle is always a zonk to see if you have edge as the hero, but uh, it's usually pretty good. And, uh, you know, it may not be the crystal sword, but I'm pretty sure if you have your neck on the uh, cutting board there with an executioner, it's going to cut pretty clean. Yeah, I have gotten an Excalibur once, which feels horrible when you know you've got an entire seed and not had a good Cecil weapon you're like well at least I'm gonna get something here and it's an Excalibur yeah so it can't roll the scrap because you can't use it The uh, hero flag on the um, the super smith has to at least roll something that the hero can actually use. And Moboy is going to launch the Falcon. Eddie is going to eat a bunch of apples. For orders of Dr. Rex. Anything to get his HP pool up. I mean, it's it's fantastic, but he is the absolute definition of a glass cannon with that spoon. Yeah, I mean, if you take him up to level 60, his HP isn't that bad, but who wants to do that? Who's got time for that? There ain't nobody got time for that. Alright, so Rex is heading down to Z right now. Should get there in just a moment. Oh, and uh, here are the Z flags coming up in chat. Uh, actually, the Z flags are from Scala. Chat's kind of falling down on the job here with these flags. I, I wasn't going to call them on it, but yeah, you're right. So, what are all these flags about there, um, Tasia? Oh, well, I'm I'm glad you asked. It does not mean it is nap time. You know, we're Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise. We're a free enterprise community. We like to randomize things. We randomize the harp songs. We randomize the boss. We try to randomize every little bit of this game. The one thing we cannot randomize, unfortunately, is Zeromus. He's just a few too many things going on with him that he does not mix well or play nice with others in the boss pool. So, what's the randomizer community to do? Well, once you use the crystal on him and he reveals his true colors, there are more than 600 different sprites uh, that could randomly be rolled and encountered once he shows his true colors. So, the Z flags are a question that represent in chat, whose butt are we gonna kick tonight? And of course, there's all the ancillary questions that chat comes up with. Uh, I, would say this, I would say this. I would say this does not have a butt. <laughs> yeah, there is no butt here. The, this is uh, this is anatomically no butt, and no hat, and it is not cute, and it cannot do your taxes. Yeah, I would say this is not a good retirement investment either. Oh my goodness. I guess this bug can give you allergies. That might be something. I mean, it's appropriate for this time of the year when the pollen is so thick it leaves like a nice coat of yellow on your car after work. Uh, I don't have that problem. It's, I have more of a white problem from birds. Oh, uh, well, yeah. We're up here in the northeast. It's, it's pollen season right now. I'm, I'm in the Northeast, too, but uh, I don't have any lot of pollen where I live. Lucky me. Lucky you. My gosh. It's, it's just, I'm just coated in it. I hate it. Hey, we, we had frost today. I mean, different problem. 
fair, that's true. It was a bit, a bit chilly. Anyway, back to the race. Lotus Miss, then. We do have the Big Bang, but yeah, the party's set up very nice right now. First Big Bang nerf. It looks like Moldboy uh, on the side is coming up to the moon to do his objectives here and is going to find out the somewhat bad news that uh, this is bringing you to go all along. Alan is trying to give this flower some frost. Yeah, you'd think that, I mean, the boss doesn't actually get our elemental weaknesses, so too bad. Um, yeah, it looks like Rex didn't actually put the Gigant Axe on Sid. He left the Dwarf Axe on, trying to nerf uh, his agility, which it feels bad to get that Gigant Axe and then not even use it. Oh, you know, it's more like that crystal star. I mean, we wanted to use it, but, you know, at least we, we could say we had it. Still, uh, Rex has this seed entirely in his control. Um, really set up very nicely, and with a, you know, here's the second Big Bang. This one is not nerfed, I don't believe, so there is a risk here. Yeah, but it doesn't take anybody down. Got some lucky rolls on some of those lower HP characters. Wow, that Eddie, he's, he's real happy about those apples now. How do you like them apples, Zeromus? Yeah! And we're getting rocks on Rex's side, so... Our two more hits should do it. It looks like there's the shake. The pollen season is defeated. Woohoo. Yeah, GG's to Rex Rawl. Moving on to 4 and 1. First win for the Rusty Spoons this week, taking down a very strong opponent, Moboy, who was otherwise 4 and 1 going into this. Very tough win and good win for Rex Rawl. GG's. We'll see if he's going to join us here in the booth before long. I hear a ding in the ear, so this looks like Rexroll. GG. Thank you. So this seed was, I mean, it, it felt a little straightforward. It was one of those, hey, if you just do your objectives, you'll be in good shape, right? Uh, that's what it turned out to be, yeah. It's like, yeah, this one was kind of wild to be honest. So, yeah. So when you saw that early spoon, that early crystal sword, I mean, what were your thoughts in terms of uh, what your party comp wanted to be? Um, well, at that point, I hadn't seen Palom or Fusia, but I'm like, uh, I'm just going to try to prioritize character text. And I kind of did that, but that was my thought at the time. Yeah, I mean, you went through most of the character checks pretty early on. I mean, uh, I think the only one you might have put off a little bit was that hook check. Uh, yeah. But you saw Fu, you saw, um, you got to went back and get the Eddie once you had the Sand Ruby. I looked, you were pretty good to go at that point. Yeah, I felt, I felt pretty good. And the thing was, like, I was, like, even at that 
just before that, because that was after uh, I think I did Cape Agnes. Um, I still was kind of holding out for a Cecil because Crystal Sword Cecil Adamant is even better than Spoonward. And I'm like, I've got the Earth Crystal. There's two characters there. There's a decent chance that Cecil, because I've already seen my duplicate too. So and, I, and, there's a decent chance. As it turned out, that's where he was. Yeah, and that makes sense. But at that point, I also saw that I'm like, I'm either a Fagul Gauntlet or an Adamant away from Go mode. So I'm like, why don't I go to these two places on the moon, which are also bosses, which are also key items, which are also like objectives. They're like three for ones, potentially. So I'm going to go there. And if I get it, then that's great. If not, then I can start rethinking from there. But so that's when I did my grind. And lo and behold, that's all I needed. As uh, Vitasia mentioned, this is a sea where it's like you do your objectives, do your freebies, you got rewarded for it. Yeah, absolutely. Finding that mist, uh, mist dragon early was was helpful too. Though I felt like I made a, a, a decent number of pretty bad mistakes early, but I got bailed out by everything like falling right into place for me by the end. Like when I found that mist dragon and it gave darkness crystal, I'm like, oh, well, I'm glad I didn't put that off. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing we really saw here in the booth that might have been um, one of those oopsies was, I know you didn't warp out of the uh, warp castle to get the uh, check from the uh, loot cave. It turned out to just be a bit of a uh, rat hole that you missed out on. It kind of helped in the end. Oh, oh well, yeah, I, I totally, like, I marked on my tracker that I did the warp check, and I just totally didn't. So, yeah, so, like, there were three that I thought... First was just like right off the bat, I went right into the uh, Baron uh, Inn fight with a fire claw uh, edge, and it's like, what what was I thinking? So that was one, and then I went to the giant for no reason. Like that was just I talked to the guy that brings you to the giant instead of the navigation thing. I meant to check the uh, shop, and I would have had back assist for like most of the seat if I had done that, but nope. And I didn't want to go up to the moon and back again at that point. And yeah, we weren't sure if you were trying for a D money grind and just thought you had to get uh, Tella actually up to the having week first, or if you, that was just a mistake yeah. altogether. Yeah, it was a straight up mistake. It just slipped my mind which place to talk to in the in the in the big whale. So, but yeah, like like I said, I, I, those things happened. But then I got bailed out by you know getting the adamant spoon word and. Um, everything being like the places that i went to paying off like i didn't feel like i was making a lot of gambles that didn't pay off in this scene so like i got yeah. luck was on my side it turned out that some of your fades actually were good fades i mean remember when you went to yeah. the baron basement check saw the dolls that hourglass didn't go off in time and you left uh, it turned out that was the magma key down there <laughs> yeah well it had to be somewhere <laughs> Well, the thing is, Moboy found it, and he went Magma route uh, first instead of Hook Oh, route. I suppose, yeah, because that was before before I drove Hook route. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so it's possible. Yeah, I can't wait to watch this one back. Yeah, it, it'll be fun to watch it back, because you, you actually went a very divergent route, went two totally different ways after uh, Baron Castle, basically. And, um, yeah, just that you sort of had the, uh, the routes that paid off. Yeah, that's kind of what it felt like to me. Yeah. But shoutouts to uh, Moldboy uh, for a great race, and uh, good luck to the rest of the spoons. I, I'm pretty sure I was the first spoon to race this week, so um, hopefully we'll do well and get another win. All right, any last thoughts on the seed? Or... I yeah, just had fun tonight, and um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you, everybody. All right, GG again. And with that, Moboy uh, does, uh, you know, quickly catch up once he finds everything on the moon. Again, had the pass. So uh, as soon as he found that Adamant Rock is able to, you know, got the objective, said, oh, okay, going down to, you know, turn that in and then can immediately jump on the, the pass shortcut and Troya and is now on the same Remember, we have Crystal Sword Cecil instead of Spoonward. Uh, Crystal Sword Cecil still putting in just as much work. Probably a little bit safer because of his HP totals. 
And there's also the Gigant Axe uh, that is equipped on Sid. So, three physical fighters all zerked up. Got two casters who can do nuke. And he is just melting with all of this damage right now. I gotta think we're gonna get rocks before we see another big bang in here. Yeah, we see a shake, but I think uh, with the damage coming out, that might trigger the reset before it even comes off. Oh, here we, here's rocks. And there's the shake and GG for Mobley. Crash boom bang 140.42. Uh, very respectable time through this. It just got hung up a little bit uh, doing some other things, but GG's to Mobley. Dig in the ear of Mobley appears. GG. GG's indeed. How's everybody doing tonight? It was a very fun race, I think. What did you think of this seed? Uh, I had a great time. Uh, definitely good to go out on a 17 out of 17, so at least I hit at least some sort of meme in here, if nothing else. Yeah, it was one of those seeds that, you know, you zigged when Rex rolls <clears> back. <throat> And that was kind of the only difference. It was a, it was just one of those rando gonna rando sometimes. Yep. No, I was banking on the, it not being a double at either of the moon altars, and it was. And I knew. I think Rex finished just about the time that I saw the adamant, and uh, that was when I knew I was sunk. Like obviously finished, but also just seeing the adamant. It's like, well, that's uh, that's where it is. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you both had the same objectives in the end. No one ever found the uh, gauntlet over that was hiding. Yep, and that's, I mean, then that's basically why I was doing all the hunting. Is there were a lot of, like, quick free checks that I had. You know, the pan bonks. I needed to launch the Falcon anyway, et cetera, et cetera. So ran through those, you know, and it looks like Rex never found the pan. So, you know, if it had been any of those, I would have been, you know, free and clear. But yeah, like you say, rando gonna rando. Yeah, I think Rex actually didn't do the warp in the dwarf castle, and that's why he didn't have the uh, the pan. But it turned out this pan was a bit of a rabbit hole. It was uh, to his yep. benefit in the end. Nope. Most of the stuff that uh, you know was that I ended up doing, I feel like it just ended up rabbit holing pretty bad. But you know, at the same time, like I also got the magma key, which massively I think probably sped up my routing just because I didn't have to deal with the hook route until I was completely overpowered. Yeah, because Moldboy did. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's to do the uh, crowd first. He didn't find the magma key. Yeah, and with that party, that's not a fun uh, hook to boss whatsoever. Well, uh, I mean. I was gonna say, I mean, any anything else that stands out in the particular seed? It, like I said, the the magma key was a big one, but other than that, it felt like you were in control, kind of the whole seed. You know, nothing really. You didn't struggle against anything. It was just one of those 
Nope, it was just routing. Like I didn't have, I didn't feel like there was a boss that really gave me too much trouble. Um, finding the Sammy bow in Eblin Castle was kind of, I think it was a combination of like Eblin Castle ended up being pretty good in the fact that it had, you know, two of the towers were free. I had basically found hourglasses I could use, um, had the power to get through them relatively quickly and only had to come back for the Mad Ogres just because I had no real way to get through them. But, you know, overall, did those relatively quickly and got some early experience to just power up those two, found the Sammy bow, and then of course finding that early Masa really sped up Overworld with Edge, and you know, just went from there. But no, I think uh, all in all, well run well run race, and it just came down to me 17 out of 17. -ing. Do you have any thought of guarding the uh, Spoonward in the bed when he had the Sand Ruby? No, you found a Crystal Cecil. Never went to Kaipo, and once I found Crystal Cecil, I was not going to Kaipo for the Sandry because that's the only person I cared about. Okay. If I didn't show up earlier, sure. I mean, but yeah. <laughs> oh no, I never went to Kaipo. Oh no, but I mean, you had the spoon as a starting item, so if he had showed up anywhere else, you probably would have taken him, right? Oh yeah, I would have taken him for early, early power, but you know, the adamant, especially no Cecil there, and getting this, the Crystal Sword out of Eblin Castle. You're just basically, there's a fair number of characters like Edward that are basically kind of on, you know, borrowed time, especially with the starting edge and finding Amasa. That's going to be your second damage dealer right there, and you just run with it. Well, cool. Yeah. Any other final thoughts on this seat before we, we let you get on with the rest of your evening, then? Nope, I'll just say it's been fun. Thank you both for uh, commentary, Plagal for tracking, Scala for restreaming. It's It was a good day and uh, good race. Absolutely. Right, well, GG's to you. GG again and have a great evening. Thank you so much. You as well. All right, once again, a big shout out to both of our runners, Rex Rawl and Mole Boy, putting on a fantastic race for us this evening. Um, just a heads up, some programming notes. Uh, we have a bunch of races. This is the only race that we're, we have tonight, uh, but tomorrow we have Alchemy versus CS Radical. That's gonna be at five o'clock Eastern time uh, on uh, the Free Enterprise channel. We have an 8 p.m. twin cast, uh, Zalde versus E Ninja 81, and Blaze versus Iker. Um, and then at 10 p.m. Eastern, we also have another twin cast, Elvin Sorrow versus Y2 Sky, and Scarn versus Erin. So lots of free enterprise going on here tomorrow. Make sure you, you tune in and you follow the entire free enterprise network of channels to go through. Um, one last shout out, of course, to the entire team, Scala Kitty for rolling the seed, uh, Darth Plagal for the tracking, and of course my co-commentator Garen. It's always a pleasure working with you, man. Same here. Uh, thank you again for uh, being my better half in the commentary tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll do it again, I'm sure, sometime soon. And uh, meanwhile, we're going to be going to raid Tall Grant for an encore, who's doing some practice seeds. Awesome. Have a great rest of the night, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow at the next race.